Well, let's see if we can run this test again and I'll show you what I did. We had to do escape, I believe. Escape. No. File. So we've got file in there, test one. And then we had to come across here to this menu where we went down to run. What else have we got? Clear count, delete track, other, new disk. Now before we, mm, before we do run, I'm going to press escape. And I'm going to see if I can move the head to a new zero position. So by pressing the left and up arrows, I'm going to hopefully set, where did it start last time? So I don't know where the origin was. Was the origin at top left hand corner? If I remember back from the drawing, it looked as though it started from the top right hand corner. So maybe we'll set that up so that it will run from the top right hand corner. Now we've got to set the focus back up again. So we'll raise the table. Perfect. I'm amazed this machine runs after having traveled halfway around the world because it was not, it hasn't been um, set up in the UK. It's been set up in China and shipped halfway around the world. So it's quite staggering really that everything is still lined up. So let's take a look at the controls. We move the head into position with these arrows here. Um, we're now going to do escape, which I think we may well see if we can call that origin, shall we? Let's, let's define our origin as being there. Now we will go into escape several times. Once, twice, three times. No. File. Ah, there we go. So we press the file, now we can get across onto the other menu, which is down here. And before we run this time, what I'm going to do is to turn on the air. So I've now added a pressure gauge into here, which allows me to set the pressure inside this head. Basically the amount of air that's flowing through the nozzle at the end there. And what I'm going to do, I was guessing, but I set that to about two and a half PSI. So we'll set that again for about two and a half PSI. So I've got the program set to run and I'm now going to press the enter button. Nothing's happening at the moment because I haven't got the laser turned on so I'm actually running through the program just to make sure that it's sitting in the right place. I think it could probably run faster than that, but I don't know how to edit it at the moment out of the program. And there we go. Now I will turn the laser on. I can try. There's nothing on the menu at the moment which tells me I've just got a picture of text. If I press start, oh it does start again. I don't need to keep turning the laser off, but I will do. And I probably don't need to keep dropping the table either. And we'll just turn the air off because we don't want to. And as you can see, the edges are absolutely crystal clear. They are superb. Well, I'm very pleased with that as a first full test. So having seen me make my mistakes, hopefully you won't make the same mistake. But, you know, 
without reading the manual or doing anything, it's not bad. We've got there. So we'll go away and prepare another program for etching. Well, here we are back at the drawing package. Um, I have to say that I'm very pleased that we've overcome some of the major problems that I noticed other people had. We've been able to get programs into the machine and we've made them work. So what we're going to do now is two etching tests. Uh, we will do them one at a time, but uh, we start off with this first test where what we're going to try and do is to fill in the letters with etching and then cut the shape off around the outside. Now to do that I'm sure that we're going to have to use two different layers, one for etching and one for cutting. And so to do that what I'm going to do is to touch on the T and put the handles up and then I'm going to select let's say a red layer, it doesn't matter what colour the layer is and if we click outside the box you'll see that we've got a red test and a black box. Now up here we've got two layers appearing, red and black. But if we want to etch the test before we cut the box out, we've got to make sure that the red layer is the first layer that we deal with. So I think that I can probably grab hold of the black layer, highlight it and drag it down below the red layer. And sure enough we can. Now at the moment the black layer has got cut on it and we know the cut works because we've just done that but what we're going we will take a look at the red layer so we'll double click on the red layer and we'll see what we can change in here output yes speed well because we're going to do etching I suspect we could go quite a lot faster probably I don't know say 150 150 millimeters a second um, that's about six inches a second blowing yes processing mode well I think we're probably going to do a scan mode this time um, minimum power say 10% maximum power say 15% so we're going to go fast with a little power just to mark the surface now we might have these values completely wrong and we'll have to come back and do it again. Um, and now we've got some extra information here. Um, we're not going to change that, we'll leave that as it is. So we'll say OK. So we will save that to a U file. Etch test 1. Save. OK. And now we'll go back into the red layer, again, highlight the red layer, and this time instead of going for scan, we'll go for dot. Dot time, 0.1, again, got no idea what these are. So let's go and see what we get. So we say OK, and we will save that. And we call this etch test two. Etch test two. Save. Okay. We just save the drawing file as well. Then we can always come back into the drawing file and recreate it. Let's go back to the machine and see what we've done. Right, well let's start this again for square one. So we need to turn on the um, control. As we turn that on we've already got the water on and we just check that the water is working okay and the laser has reset itself to datum and it's gone back to the origin point that I set the last time. So what I'm now going to do is to plug the uh, and it's, there's three, so there's two spots on there. Um, I don't know whether either of those works, but I've plugged it into the top one. I think the PC may well be for this um, Ethernet link. So I haven't got the laser switched on yet. Um, so what we do first of all, uh, where did we start from last time? I think it was probably file. 
and then we get all these options down here one of which is to oops wrong one read me new disk enter read the new disk file which will be enter and we've got H1 and H2 shown there so I can go down to H1 and I should be able to then copy to the memory enter enter it's done it now I should be able to go down to H2 Oops. H2 uh, enter no read from the disk enter no, wrong one, we've already done that H2 enter and now copy to memory enter so that's H2 copied to memory so I think we're finished with the U-disk now so if we go back to file so we should be able to do enter if we go back to file I should be able to choose one enter and now we're nearly ready I'll turn the laser on Turn the air on to two and a half psi. So I've now selected H1 instead. I'm going to press the start button, but I might have to do run. Let's try start. Those dots have in fact just about pierced through to the other side here. So that hasn't come out how we expected it to come out. Right, well here we can clearly see it says H test H number two, H test two. Um, and it looks as though we've got a filled in test. Down we go, turn the laser back on, turn the air on, two and a half psi. Now we'll just press the run button, enter. Well it looks very messy, whatever it is. It's about one PSI doing that cut out. Well we've done something. It's made a mess on the surface but It is only dust, vapour. I've dropped the pressure right down at the end here. The pressure was high at the top there. So it doesn't need very much pressure. And that's cut away about maybe 0.1. It's about 0.1 deep. So it looks as though we have to go dot rather than scan to produce that effect. And that one is scan rather than dot. And I suppose that's Chinese for you. <laughs> so I think we'll call that the end of our tutorials at the moment um, so that I can get them all published. Well, I'm now going to carry out a lot more in-depth testing of this machine and as I get my results I will start to publish them. But this will be enough to get you going and then you'll be in the same position that I'm in. You've got a machine that runs and you know roughly how to use it. So I'll catch up with you later. Thanks for watching.